Hello everybody, Busy Gamer Dad. going to be doing a special session recording today for Sea of Stars. If you don't know what the session recording series here is on the Busy Gamer Dad channel, we take a look at a game over the course of three episodes throughout the week. Look at it for about 20-30 minutes every episode. This week we're taking a look at Sea of Stars. I've been waiting for this game for a long time. I kickstarted this game. It was uh, in development for a pretty long time, but they kept on pushing out great updates and they had a demo very recently and it got me even more hyped. They did their launch trailer and I'm going to be getting the physical copy of it probably next year is what they say, but they, along with that physical copy, what I also uh, kickstarted was getting a digital copy for us to play here today and see if it's something that you guys might like. If you don't know what Sea of Stars is, it is not Star Citizen, it is not Armored Core, it's not Diablo, it's not a AAA title. It is a game of uh, nostalgia for me and a lot of retro gamers because it is very akin to the Super Nintendo uh, style graphics. Not that it has that limitation. It is uh, got a lot of mechanics inside it. It's also a game that uh, is drawing heavily from like Chrono Trigger or the Final Fantasy series or even uh, any of those other uh, uh, Genesis ones like Fantasy Star type of ideas where you have you're not standard for elemental crystals that you're hunting down and trying to save the world it's uh got a great story arc to it and i hope to uh do a bunch of episodes for this if you guys like it if not i'll play it on my own i don't mind i like this game a lot already i played a little bit of it just to get my legs underneath me for the recording so i could make sure that this was the best uh, uh possible recording for you guys to see if you guys were on the fence about it and i could sway you to actually purchasing the game because i really do think that this is a game worth investing your time in um now, that all being said, this is actually going to be a very special episode. It's my birthday uh, episode. Uh, I'm going to be doing a wonderful uh, stream soon on that, so stay tuned uh, with the comments on the YouTube for that. But I'm going to stand up here and I'm going to show you. My wife got me this wonderful shirt. Le level 40, unlock. Yep. You are watching a 40-year-old play video games, and I am proud of it. So without any further introduction, we're going to jump into this game right here and have some fun with it. I want you guys to pay attention to something. This is how smart the developers were for this game. The campfire in the bottom left hand corner. You'll notice that there is nothing there right now and there's nothing going on there. That changes and you guys really should pay attention to it. All right, so without any further ado, we'll kick ourselves off now. New game, absolutely. Here we go. So it looks like we can actually pick our affinity and then can be changed. It does not, it can be changed later and does not affect the story. So, uh, Valerie. Yeah, let's do Valerie. Goddess Luana and God Solon. Yeah. Let's do the, uh, let's do that. That works out fine. That's totally fine. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking for some great feedback on this game to see if there's anything that I can do to improve how I uh, the production quality for you guys. Um, if there's any way I can make it better, worse, and different. Well, obviously you don't want me to make it worse for you, but if I can uh, improve how this game comes across for you guys, because I really do want you guys to at least try the demo for yourselves, because I believe that's still available on Steam. Um, for our session gameplay series, I like to put those uh, informational links down in the uh, chat for you guys in the YouTube description. Uh, let's see. Welcome to the Great Archives, adventurer. I suppose curiosity brought you here. An important trait, to be sure. I am the archivist, an immortal versus uh, yeah, an immortal versed in the ways of alchemy. But perhaps you knew that already. I didn't know that already. Well, I knew that already, but I'm not sure you guys knew. That After spending millennia cataloging the many events of countless timeless timelines i've decided to return here to mull over everything i had seen in my musings about the stories that filled these books and scrolls i had a recent epiphany it seems that in my haste i may have overlooked the very thing i was hoping to find as such there is one story i wished to revisit one deserving of a witness and should the mists of time allow a slight alteration i believe the ray of hope that was once offered may yet bloom.
So walk with me tonight, and we will explore a tale of high adventure, of magic and deceit, of friendship and wonder, but mostly a tale of heroism. That one, one that I believe will offer valuable insight in the search for a resolution to the thralls of the Fleshmancer. Now I remain a bit lost amidst all these timelines and all these subtle variations, but I know just the one to make for a perfect starting point. Let us see what we find in there. Ah yes, our story begins in a world visited by the Fleshmancer generations prior causing much turmoil and leaving a mark that has yet to be cleansed, fully cleansed. Somewhere on Evermist Island, two brave children of the Solstice are on their way to meet with an immortal spirit. In order to become fully-fledged Solstice warriors, they will need to learn how to use magic without using magic. And off we go. Nice. See if we can change some of the bordering here. All right, we made it. So far, so good. So the Elder Mist lives somewhere here, huh? Do you think it's just another test? Could be, but it sure beats sitting at the academy and sewing. Haha, <laughs> I'm sure glad that's over with. Apply yourselves, for the will you weave into it shall be your sole defense in times of gr the greatest need. While the lessons taught here may appear to be lost on you, something deep inside you is compelled to learn. Mm, yeah, that's, that's basically teaching in a nutshell. <laughs> hey, the sun will be setting soon. We should prepare to set up camp. Let's split up and search for a good spot. Okay, bye. Time for some scouting. <gasps> a monster! I'm coming through. So, very simplified combat here. We see that, you know, you have attacks, skills, and items. This is like Mario RPG, uh, where you have uh, timed uh, strikes and timed defense. So if you hit the button at the right time, you do a double swing, doing more damage. If you time it right with a block, you can uh, block the damage. There's also a, as you see, uh, the uh, combo meter there. If I had access to my skills right now, we might be able to break his attack, but I don't think we will be able to. In essence, if you are able to break their uh, uh, ability using the combos that you see on the screen, it stops their turn. It's very challenging and it's a great uh, engaging mechanic to keep the players on their toes and to think tactically as opposed to just mashing the uh, A button. Brew Graves wasn't kidding. These feel a lot easier to fight already. Let's see where this leads. All right, we're gonna be right back in a little bit.
All right. Interesting. There. Cool. Okay. All right. So, okay. Okay. So back. Um, I just tooled around a little bit. I'm not sure why it's doing the letterboxing. I'll figure that out after uh, this recording and see if I can address it. Um, but it's not taking away from the aesthetic. Uh, what you see on the screen has actually been really good. Um, so, like you see, there, this game is got some life in the background, essentially is what I call it. You know, there's actually moving parts. And very much like Chrono Trigger, you can see the enemies. And you can understand uh, that this is like a living world. Missed it. Yep, ouch, tough one. Let's try this. So we have skills, we have access to skills. This one is a fun skill to use, um, but I think I would actually rather use, no, I need to use this one actually. Yeah, I need to use this one to take, oh, it's not gonna let me, I need to use this one, okay. Uh, so arc and smash, so your melee attacks, if you hit them at the right time, you can also get a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? that knock uh, uh, ability, that uh, double strike, or that increased damage. All um, attack abilities seem to have this. That may not be a universal statement, but that's at least what I've noticed from my time with the game. All right, Valerie found anything? Just a dead end, how about you? Nothing of note, but the way to the top is definitely through here. The sun is setting, come over and I'll get a fire going. I'll be right there, can't wait for more tomato clubs so this is uh, uh, another part of the world where there's actually interactable environments where you can uh, change the world as it were that you can uh, open shortcuts or climb on things traverse and explore it's not again a static world this world has uh, a cadence to it and a life to it and there's actually uh, hidden nooks and crannies overlapping features and the developers took the time to include things like that and to show you the characters shimmying along walls and climbing up surfaces and everything has been animated for that pixel art animated for that now let's get ourselves you're gonna attack me no matter what so right there do our so right there, you saw my staff go down and block that attack. That uh, is that, that indicates that you've actually done what you needed to do. Now, unfortunately, you see that uh, sword symbol. We don't have a slashing weapon. We have a blunt weapon. 
so that's what the hammer means. And we aren't able to um, uh, break any combos if you see that right now. Um, and you'll see why in a little bit. We're going to make ourselves go across these cliffs, jump over here. Like, there, it's, it's controlled and on the rails platforming, but there's platforming. And there's also aspects of the game where you need to uh, change your perspective and address various um, uh, uh, traversal things by doing specific platforming, looking for specific platforms. Ha, huh. but it doesn't beat the first, the face you made the first time you tried smashing a sunball. Oh, I still hear the headmaster gloating. As I said, whether by paying attention in class or by reckless attempting, recklessly attempting to hit a projectile with your open palm, you will learn the first rule of solar magic. To be fair, you did learn. Oh yeah, that one took once. Huh, that's funny. You ever miss those years? Before training, just being kids, always daydreaming and getting into trouble. And making mistakes. I'm sorry, Valerie. I didn't mean... It's okay. I understand why he wouldn't want to join us after what happened. It's just... I wish he had said goodbye, you know? After ten years of not seeing his face, just to know that he's alright. And that we're still friends. Why didn't we have... To, why did we have to get ahead of ourselves anyway? Oh, Garl. Ten years ago in the village of Moon Cradle. So, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to try and look for a better position. So the next episode, stay tuned. I'll be in a different corner. <laughs> My weapon will be something that really hits really hard, and I'll pick a fast one. We'll be unstoppable. Imagine all the wonders we'll see we'll find after we leave Evermist Island. I want to see the sleeper. What's that? You've never heard of the sleeper? Stories say it's a giant serpent, and it's been sleeping curled up around a mountain since even before there was were traveling historians to record it no way sure is and it's super dangerous too but don't worry it can't wake up why not apparently there's holes in the mountain and the wind blows through them and that plays a melody that keeps it asleep whoa I want to see it too it's the bell Erlina and Brugaves are back. Quick, maybe we can catch them before they go to the academy. And then, yep, we're going to take off. Go this way. And now we're seeing a flashback, and we're playing through the flashback. I think we're actually going towards the village center. Yep. Hey, wait. And there's cutscenes. Fully animated cutscenes. There you are. Playing in your secret hideout again? We were training. I think I can use magic now. Is that so? Let's see it then. Whoa! Come closer, Zeal. Open your palm and concentrate. What about you, Valerie? Have you been training too? Every day. I bet I'm stronger than you now. Ha! I'm sure you are. Come here then. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, easy now. I can't report to the headmaster if you knock me out.
That was awesome, Zael. You did it! Solstice Warriors. If you are done with your babysitting duties, I would hear your report. Right away, Headmaster. Can we go too? Believe me, once you enter Zenith Academy, you'll wish you hadn't. Let's go, Brewgaves. Hey, the full moon is out. He's right. Want to go to the Forbidden Cavern again? Oh, of course. We tried already. I can't open it. Yeah, but last time we decided maybe the full moon could make the rune more sensitive. I'm sure it'll work. And Moraine will be so impressed. He'll take you two in for training right away. And then we'll finally be allowed to leave this island. What if he gets mad and delays our training instead? Nah, no way. Well, we can worry about that after I open it. I mean, if I open it. All right, let's go. So, Garl is, for all intents and purposes, the, the, the normal boy, the, the one without the special powers. So, you couldn't see it really uh, right there. But in the loading screens, much like on the title screen, uh, there are animated sprites for your characters. And depending on who you have in your party, the sprites are all three or just uh, uh, Zale and Valerie. It, you can see Garl there right now, uh, peeking out more um, at the end. So when I move myself in the top corner, you'll be able to actually fully enjoy that. I think that's where I'm going to put my uh, character or my uh, my video recording. Um, but to that end, we are going to end our episode here today right now uh, with us opening our first dungeon. We made it. Time for us to stop for a snack. What? I'm not hungry. Yeah, we just left a few minutes ago. Look, it's not a real adventure if you don't eat a snack on the road. Plus, I made something special for the occasion. Here. <laughs> yep. Whoa, that's really good. Yeah, no kidding. Glad you like it. It's the jam. I used a bit of sap from the Celestial Willow. You could get it in trouble for that. Only if you tell. Ha ha ha. All right. Maybe it's the Celestial will Willow Jelly that made her powers come through. All right. How do I do this? Maybe like Arlena showed me. Try opening your palm and concentrating. You got this, Valerie. <gasps> Ooh. And it worked. I knew it. It worked. I did it. I finally did it. So, what now? The headmaster must have heard the bell. Do we just wait for him to show up? Might as well enter it. Can be our first adventure. Yeah, and then the headmaster will know we're not afraid. This is exciting. Let's go. Famous last words. Forbidden cave. It's forbidden for a reason. But like they look at the animation in the the background. The the plants are swaying. There's ambient light glowing. All things have been really done with a loving care and a love letter to previous year's games. There's monsters over there. Let's hide. I thought Evermist Island was safe. Guess that it's only true in Moon Cradle. We should go back. They look dangerous. Yeah, good call. Oh, bit off more than you can true, and now all of a sudden... Oh, hey! Watch out, there's another one! This is bad, we're surrounded! Maybe try to use your powers? 
We're not ready for this. Yeah, but you bit off more than you can chew. I, I don't know. Just try. Okay, let me focus. Watch out, it's preparing for something. Come on, come on. Valerie, watch out. Ah! No, Garl! My eye! It really hurts. I can't, I can't see. There's no escape. It's about to attack again. Laser beams from the heavens. So it was you. As resourceful as you are reckless, I see. Headmaster Garl needs help. Let me just do a little shimmy. It feels better. Like anyone born in Moon Cradle, a regular kid, what Garl needs is to not concern himself with the affairs of the Solstice Warriors. So there's some elitism here. I'm really sorry, Headmaster. It was all my idea. Hey. Be thankful that the only cost of this lesson was an eye, young lad. As for the two of you, if you are so eager to receive training, I shall oblige. Follow me. All right, that was an epic beginning. And we're gonna call our episode here. Busy Gamer Dad, first session gameplay series for uh, Sea of Stars. Hopefully you like this. I understand it's not Star Citizen. It's not Armored Core, it's not Diablo, it's not any of the uh, crazy AAA games. This is a game that's a love letter to the Super Nintendo era RPGs, Sega Genesis RPGs, the 90s RPGs, and it's right in my swim lane, so that's why I'm super eager to play it with you guys. I will have the description for it and the link to pick it up digitally on all platforms, I believe, uh, in the YouTube descriptions for you guys. Uh, and right next to there, like, comment, subscribe if you feel so inclined. Otherwise, your viewership was just as enough. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking this out. And if I can convince even one of you to just check out the demo if it's still available, then I've done my job because I think this game is really awesome. It's not what you are going to find as a triple A title, and that's with good reason because this is a love letter to those uh, RPGs of yesteryears, and the story is really awesome. So I can't wait to go on the journey with you guys. We'll catch up in the next episode on the session gameplay series where we get a little bit further and see what happens to our three would-be heroes. Later. <laughs>